And as you noted, Kenya spends 5% of our GDP. In fact, uh, UNECA, UN Economic Commission for Africa figures indicate Africa spends 5 to 9% of our GDP to address uh, adaptation issues, relocating our budget from development to responding to uh, impacts of climate change. Allow me now to invite uh, His Excellency the Cabinet Secretary for National Treasury and Economic Planning. As we all know, and as I said earlier, climate finance will be a pivotal issue, a central issue in COP29. His Excellency President William Ruto is the leader of international financial reform agenda, and debt issue is a big discussion at COP29 and the UN General Assembly, and nobody is better to lead us in that discussion than our minister, our cabinet secretary for National Treasury. You have the floor, Your Excellency. And may I also invite, ask you to invite His Excellency, the Right Honorable Prime Minister. Uh, thank you. <coughs> thank you, Ali. Um, good morning. I have a problem with my voice, but uh, I hope today it will uh, cooperate. Right Honorable Raila Molodinga, former Prime Minister of the Republic of Kenya, the Honorable Adan Bareduale, Cabinet Secretary for Environment, Climate Change and Forestry, and the Honorable Alice Wahome, Cabinet Secretary for Lands, Public Works, Housing and Urban Development. I'm told Professor Ibrahim, uh, who is the Assistant Minister of Technical Affairs, Minister of Housing, Utilities and urban communities of the Arab Republic of Egypt has, has also joined us uh, virtually. I want to also recognize uh, Ambassador Sultan, who is going to be our host soon, uh, my sister from Eswatini, and all distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning once again. <clears throat> Let me start by saying that I'm happy to be part of this important event where the continent of Africa has joined hands to address a global challenge which we are all aware of, the climate change, it is the, which is directly impacting on our lives and more pronounced among the poor women and children. I wish, I wish to take also this opportunity to welcome you all to Nairobi for this important event. Thank you for our honoring our invitation. We are gathered here today because of the significant role that the collaborations and partnerships in our countries play in accelerating climate financing needed to deliver on the goals of the Paris Agreement and drive sustainable, inclusive, and resilient development and growth. As we are all aware, climate change continues to present a major threat to the long-term growth and prosperity with adverse impacts on the fiscal sustainability and economic well-being, especially for developing countries like ours in Africa, with limited financial resources. So apart from the direct impact and effects of the climate change, it's also putting a serious strain on our past and our budgets. And as Honorable Duale has just uh, mentioned, and the others before, that we spend a huge chunk of our budgetary provisions in trying to mitigate and address uh, the impact of climate change. And so it is important to address it before so that we don't end up at the point where now we have to spend so much money to mitigate the same. The impact of climate change and its related response actions have direct effect on our fiscal position by lowering revenues and increasing public spending, and hence a lower envelope of public investment and public goods provision. As climate field risks intensifies, losses and damages due to insufficient adaptation responses and a sinkhole of financial protection are a first emerging major macroeconomic concern for climate vulnerable economies like ours. Despite significant progress in several fronts, the international climate finance and funding commitments have fallen well short of what is required by the African countries to address the climate crisis. Ladies and gentlemen, 
I am cognizant of the many efforts in the past geared towards improving adaptive capacity and building resilience at global, regional, and national uh, arenas. However, I must admit that the impacts of these efforts are yet to be fully realized due to limited climate finance, financial flows emanating from inadequate technical capacity to develop bankable proposals amid a complex and rigorous climate finance access requirements and procedures. Our people from across the continent are today more deprived in both economic and social realms due to adverse impacts of climate change and disasters which have increased in frequency and scale not only in the recent past but also at present threatening environmental sustainability and ecological balance. I am fully aware that African Green Climate Finance's National Designated Authorities Network, which is abbreviated as AFDAN, is already recognized by the Committee of the African Heads of States and Governments on Climate Change, giving the right leverage to undertake its role in finding the African solution in terms of the much needed means of implementation with key focus on access to climate finance and technology as we shift away from capacity building to capacity strengthening for a low carbon and climate resilient development pathway. If you follow my speech, a little bit different from Honorable Duales and Alice Wahome, is heavily on finances, and you'd understand why. Uh, Your Excellency, as a national treasury, I am also looking at the off-budget, off-balance sheet financing, and I am really focusing on the financial aspect as my colleagues uh, deal with the technical aspect of uh, uh, dealing with climate change. AFDAN platform is therefore considered as a strategic platform for African countries that strengthen advocates for uh, increased predictable and sustainable climate finance for adaptation and mitigation by strengthening south, south to north cooperation and promoting African-led solutions for climate change. As such, it is our collective responsibility to be part and parcel of this noble movement. AFDAN is intended to address financing challenges by promoting African countries to accelerate the political will and regulatory efforts that will allow them to mobilize climate and green finance at scale, promoting cross-country learning and creating a tangible co commitment for green growth. I am confident that AFDAN will enable continent to build consensus, articulate priorities, and share learning and best practices on climate finance solutions developed in unique African contexts. It is an African solution to African challenges. I don't want to call it African problems. African challenges. As I have already flagged out, addressing the adaptation and resilient measures at the local level is at the heart of our conversations and policy discussions. Our attention is drawn to two key programs which resonate with the African needs, notably financing locally-led climate actions, popularly known as FLOCA, and building climate resilience of urban poor, the big crap that Honorable Alice Waome talked a lot about, at both the rural and urban levels. I'm told we are doing fairly well or averagely well in rural areas. But at the urban level, we are doing so poorly as a country and probably as a continent. Kenya has established the FLOCA program that seeks to build climate resilience of communities within the 47 country, counties of Kenya. Actually, we received uh, funding which we have already disbursed to the counties to implement um, various activities that are supposed to help in mitigating on climate change. These are the initiatives that we need to Im employ upon to ensure that Africa is prioritizing locally led solutions to its challenges on climate change. I urge our fellow African countries to benchmark with Kenya on FLOCA and scale it up with even better structures for building climate resilience for their people. The other program on BICRA, 
provides hope for millions of African urban residents as the glaring statistics notes that majority of the African countries have about, and as Honorable Dwali again said, 60% of, our, of, of their population as urban residents, categorized under the urban poor who live in poor neighborhoods. So if we will have 50% of our population in urban areas and you have 60% of them poor, then that is 30% of the population of a country and suffer the greatest consequences of the climate induces calamities or induced calamities. All this require financing to build resilience and enhance their adaptive capacity. Kenya has achieved significant milestone in climate change and climate finance by putting in place the relevant legal and institutional frameworks, including the Climate Change Act of 2016, National Climate financing, Finance Policy, Sovereign Green Bond Framework, National Green Fiscal in Incentive Policy Framework, among others. But despite all these efforts, we are still grappling with climate change impacts. In the last one and a half years, Kenya has experienced abnormally heavy rains within two seasons that neg negatively impacted on lives of many Kenyans. I consider the inhibiting factor as limited access to climate finance that should support practicable locally led solutions. Call to action. As I make this clarion call today, as a continent, we must come out strongly, united and driven by one key agenda of formation and operationalization of AFDAN to enhance our access to climate finance. This is something that we cannot do individually as nations. We must come together as a continent and insist uh, in enhancing climate change financing. If anything, we are not the polluters of the environment. We know where the polluters reside. It is my sincere wish that this important meeting will also come out with a declaration that will shape up the agenda of the upcoming 10th uh, special session of APCAN to be held in September 2024 in Abidjan, Cote d'Ivoire. United Nations General Assembly, which will take place in New York, and COP29 to be held in Azerbaijan, among other regional and global forums. As I conclude, uh, Your Excellency, allow me also to mention something about you, which my colleagues have said, but just as a matter of emphasis, Honorable Dwale and I have worked with you very closely. I've actually worked with you more closely than anyone else, and I continue to still work with you because I'm still a member, very strong member of uh, your party, which you lead. I hope I will soon join the Council of Elders of that party, uh, having resigned uh, from the position of the national chairman. I know your position and stand on environmental issues. If there is anyone Africa needs to champion as a champion of, uh, of issues of climate change, then that person is none other than Right Honorable Raila Molodinga. There, I am sure we can't go wrong. Your history is documented. We know how you fought very hard in terms of conservation of even our forests and water catchment areas, Mao forests and other forests across the country. And so we would not get, go wrong uh, by having you at the African Union. You will be an advocate and a champion for uh, protection of our environment. And uh, that will go a long way in helping mitigating our, the climate change. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now my pleasure to invite the Right Honorable Raila Molodinga. Uh, let's put our hands together and welcome Raila, the Right Honorable.